We did get a little bit of a pressure test on the Nord Stream 1 yesterday, a little bit right. of a flow. What is your expectation in those scenarios about the one that is most likely to occur tomorrow? All right. Well, I, I think you said it. Uh, the suspense is on. It's very hard to predict. Of all the four scenarios you, you laid out, I think I would bet on two or three. I would rule out one and rule out four, not very firmly. But I think the idea is to keep Europe on, the, on its toes and to divide European support for Ukraine. So this cannot be achieved by cutting off supplies entirely now. That would just galvanize uh, support for Ukraine and uh, opposition to Russia. The idea is to break down the, the wall of European um, opposition and, and support to Ukraine. So it's two, a reduced flow, uh, or, or three, uh, a delay, but a delayed uh, a restart, okay. but a delayed restart. You're saying some big things, Antoine, that Putin may be using this pipeline and energy as a wedge to almost break Europe up from an economic perspective. So that in mind, why do you, why do you think scenario four is, is highly unlikely? Well, you know, four could obviously happen, but I think this is something that Putin could have uh, at his uh, disposal in the event of a failure to break down European support for Ukraine. So the idea now, I think, is to apply pressure, to erode, European unity to, to drive a wedge between European countries like he did before in March when he asked for Google payment. Uh, the idea is not to, to punish and to undermine the European economy just yet. That would happen if European support for Ukraine persisted and then I think we would have a stronger likelihood of a complete break in exports to punish uh, Europe, to uh, hurt the European population yeah. uh, and to, to, uh, to undermine the European economies. And one of the reasons that we're here in this steel mill is because we're trying to connect the dots. If there is a reduced or no gas flow, if the German government says to industry, I'm sorry, we have to save gas for hospitals and nursing homes and people's homes in the winter, you need to shut down. If a place like this place, Schmiescast in Langenfeld, Germany, Antoine, is forced to shut down for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, the entire global supply chain is going to be affected. They, they make parts here for oil and gas, for hydraulic fracturing, for pumping, for all kinds of different components. And, and that seems to be the global market risk, is it not? Why the American audience right now is saying, why do we care? You care because this is the fourth biggest economy in the world. And if we get a shutdown here, that's a seismic shock to the global markets, is it not? Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a very big shock. And I, I'm not sure we have fully uh, appreciated how big a shock it is just yet. Uh, you know, if we have a shortfall of gas supplies in Germany, the likelihood of having to, to ration uh, supplies to various sectors is going to be very strong. We're going to have to prioritize and decide which sectors get gas, which don't. Uh, presumably, residential consumers are going to be prioritized. Uh, but the, the ripple effects are very deep. And, you know, whatever happens in Germany affects the rest of the world at large. The rest of Europe, for sure, but uh, as far yeah. as the U.S. and the world. You know. And uh, we're going to say goodbye, Antoine, but I want our viewers, I know it's early out, out in the United States, to put their head around that. The German economy is not as big as the U.S. economy, but it's one of the biggest in the world. And can you imagine if the government went to California and said, you got to shut down these industries, but not these industries, this, but not that. It is nearly impossible. The executives I've talked to here and elsewhere say, how do you pick? How do you know? Antoine Half, thank you very much.